Today, I visit with director Jamie Platt of Warrensburg, Missouri. I'm Rick Jay, your host, and this is Spotlight on the Arts. J presents Spotlight on the Arts. Welcome to Spotlight on the Arts, uh, coming to you from the University of Central Missouri in uh, Warrensburg, Missouri. I, my special guest today, Miss Jamie Platt of Warrensburg, Missouri, the director of the University of Central Missouri. Well, Jamie, I want to welcome you and thank you for taking time out of your busy schedule to uh, share your story uh, as an artist and also now director of uh, the UCM, as we call it for short, University of Central Missouri. Uh, so welcome, it's great to have you here. Well, thank you so much, Rick. Thank you for inviting me. Very good, very good. Well, this is your first visit on the Spotlight on the Arts, and hopefully a few more as the time goes by and new exhibits come uh, to, uh, to face, I guess you might say, or for, uh, for the viewer's uh, time in the gallery. I've been looking forward to your interview um, for quite a while. Um, since you became director at the UCM Gallery of Art and Design, if you would, uh, Jamie, if I may call you by your first name, would you please share with the viewers a little bit about Jamie Platt? Sure. Well, so I uh, am recently, uh, I have recently moved here. I moved from Ohio, but originally I'm from Michigan. And I uh, grew up there, and then I went to uh, Kendall College of Art and Design in Grand Rapids, Michigan for my undergraduate degree in painting. And then from there, I went to grad school in Indiana at Indiana University in Bloomington, Indiana, uh, where I also studied painting for my MFA. And after that, I taught for a while in Indianapolis and the, at the Heron School of Art and Design and a few other institutions as well before moving to the metropolitan area of Washington, D.C., where I taught classes in uh, art and color and um, design and drawing for uh, adults in the Smithsonian Resident Associates Program. And now I am here. I actually live in Kansas City and I commute to Warrensburg. It's about an hour commute. And I live in Kansas City with my husband and our four cats. Great, great. Well, you, you come to the University of Central Missouri very well endorsed and uh, with a lot, of, uh, uh, a lot to share with the uh, visitors to the gallery and your associates here. The, uh, instructors, professors, what have you, facilitators. So I know they're really fortunate, I feel, to have you uh, within the overall Missouri network of the great artists that we are able to uh, visit with and chat with here on the Spotlight on the Arts. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Well, um, how long have you been a visual artist then? Can you share how you became inspired to become an artist? Oh, you know forever. I mean, it, it's, I think um, everyone has a different story, but you, you hear so often about uh, how someone uh, just started drawing as a kid, like we all do, and never stopped. And that's, that's me. I, it's, it's never as simple as that. I, um, I always knew that I wanted to be an artist, making that decision about uh, deciding on a career path took a little bit more consideration because I didn't grow up with uh, artists in my family and didn't know how any of that worked. 
Um, but when I realized that um, I could live on minimum wage if I had to, I decided that I would uh, aim for being happy. And so I decided to go to school and, uh, and it's, it's working out great. I'm really glad that I made that decision. Excellent, excellent. Sounds like you made an excellent decision. Now, uh, let's talk a little bit about your, your time thus far here at the University of Central Missouri uh, Fine Arts uh, Gallery, what have you. Can you tell us what that has meant to you just in these, what, few months? Yeah. Well, being a gallery director is something that I didn't, I didn't plan to do when I started going to school, but when I was an undergraduate, I had an opportunity to, uh, to be an intern at a contemporary art center. Oh, and see. so, and I was a curatorial intern, and that's where I learned many of the skills that I still use today as a gallery director in terms of how to hang artwork and how to do all the practical things that go into setting up an exhibition. And then I, later had an opportunity to volunteer on their um, their visual arts committee selecting the artwork so learning about that process and i realized that operating a gallery is like making artwork but yes. you you do it with lots of other people and so that was that was sort of the gateway and then as I started working as a gallery director, when I was first working in, at Marshall University as a, a gallery director in Huntington, West Virginia, before coming here and then coming here as well, what I have learned is that being a gallery director is sort of being in the center of helping artists to set up their shows and helping people to interpret the art and not that I not that I give them suggestions about how to interpret it, but I give them information, and then they can interpret it for themselves. And yes. so, being a gallery director is really it's a it's a multifaceted job, but it it all involves bringing people together over art. Right now, you have to actually physically assist making sure that they, the the. Um, the artwork is uh, presented properly, yeah. working with different ones. Now we're going to talk more about what's happening at the UCM in our second part. Uh, that you know, different local artists uh, from different areas and uh, working through. Uh, I understand uh, naturally at uh, the uh, local art uh, association, which I'm proud to say I'm a member of. But we'll talk more about that uh, in the second half. Now, so what then, after all this, and you become a director, what now inspires you, keeps you going, and uh, can't wait to get to work, I hope, <laughs> at this time, at this point? Well, it's interesting. I think that my work has always come from my life, and so, Whatever is whatever is happening in my life is uh, part of where I draw inspiration for my work, and and I think that's that's probably the same basically for everyone. You know that things um, that are happening in your life just make you think about things in a different way, and then and for artists that's a way of processing what you're thinking about. Yes, so yes. for me, I really am very interested in um, people and relationships and the dynamics of relationships. And so uh, my, my, um, my home, and which is new to me, is a big source of inspiration. And uh, you know, the, my husband, my cats, my friends, I see. So we all draw on that, and that's coming from the heart, it sounds like. Yeah. So that's what I was trying to dig in a little bit and find out from, uh, for example, Mrs. Platt's uh, heart, where it's coming from. So that's what continues to inspire you naturally, and then to exhibit that, I guess, shall we say, or present that through a gallery helping others. Uh, 
uh, etc. Now, do you show in other galleries uh, in the past, or I have, I have, I've had um, multiple exhibitions, and I actually am getting ready for an exhibition right now, which will be um, in Rushville, Illinois, in July. I see. So you'll be on the road with your artwork. Yeah. And, uh, and my, is that a, like a 10, 14, 20 piece exhibit? Yeah, or? it'll be about 16 pieces. Super. Yeah. Well, we can't, um, we can't just sh wait to share these pieces. <laughs> as you're going to see here on the timeline as we're talking, some of the, the awesome work of uh, Jamie Platt. So that's great. Well, before things get a away from us, uh, time especially, can you give us uh, your contact information uh, in case someone would like to reach out to you for more information or yeah. even possibly a commission if you're doing commissions? Sure. So, uh, well, there are a couple of ways that you can get in touch with me. Um, I have a website. It is jamieplatt.net. And then I also have uh, an Instagram page that is um, jamie.platt123 at, at it, well, you use the at symbol and then jamie.platt123. We'll get that on the timeline and uh, as I scroll right. underneath so people can't miss that. So okay. If you have questions and want to know more about the UCM or uh, uh, Mrs. Platt's uh, life as an artist, I'm, you know, I invite you to call or uh, visit uh, us on Instagram also. Well, uh, it's, uh, it's time to take a quick break, so please make yourself comfortable uh, while we look at uh, some special messages. After the break, Jamie will fill us in on her favorite pieces and, and what is happening currently at the UCM Gallery of Art and Design here in Warrensburg, Missouri, and also what her favorite medium is, uh, media or what have you, uh, subject matters of that matter. So stay with us, we'll be right back. GIAJ Global Media OTT Network. Google us or find us on Roku, Amazon Fire TV, or Apple TV. Welcome back, everyone, to Spotlight on the Arts. I continue with my special guest, director, artist Jamie Platt, of the University of Central Missouri, Warrensburg. Missouri. Well, Jamie, before the break, you shared a lot of information, so let's continue along those lines of thought and expression. Uh, can you please describe your type of art as we're looking at it here on the timeline? Sure. So I'm a painter. I primarily work in oil paint, and I also do a lot of drawing. And you can probably tell from looking at my work that I am very interested in drawing. I, I also um, incorporate a kind of realism in my work that isn't necessarily about um, a, like a strict, uh, accurate portrayal of reality. I bend things and stretch things to expressive purposes, partly intentionally and partly because it's just the way that I work. And I think um, perception is a funny thing. When we, when we look at something, um, sometimes because we, are, we have the ability to focus in on something without even realizing that we're doing it, uh, a part of an object or, uh, or a part of a scene can appear to us to be larger than it actually is in relation to the things that it's nearby. And we don't even realize that until we, until we start to actually try to measure. And so one of the things I think is interesting is to try to, to use 
that kind of perceptual inaccuracy, if you will, to advantage in painting because it it's a way of showing uh, or even learning what you were paying attention to. Oh, I see. That's an interesting concept. So, so I guess to pick a favorite, um, uh, shall we say, subject matter, that could be varied. I I seem to understand. Yeah, it really depends. And I think that uh, there are a couple of different things that I'm interested in. And I, I, like, I like to work from life, and I like to work from my imagination. And so when I work from life, um, I, tend to, I tend to prefer to work with figures but, but I also do like still life occasionally and, uh, and um, cityscapes or landscapes. Um, and so when I'm, when I'm painting from life, what I'm really looking at is relationships. So it's, it's interesting because it's, it's, you know, different subjects and I have different responses to different subjects, but um, but what I'm really, what I'm really getting invested in when I'm act, when I'm making the painting is how do the colors work next to the other colors? And so, so like for example, there one of my favorite paintings that I've made is uh, is called Seventh and Taco Bell. And uh, when I when I started to make that painting, um, I didn't know what I was actually going to be looking for. And during the painting process, I figured out what I was interested in about the painting because, well, it's going to seem kind of funny, but you, when you look at something, um, you, really, you really only see what you need to see. And there are a lot of things about a scene that you don't notice, don't pay attention to. And painting from life, you don't, you, you really learn what is in front of you because you, in order to make that work, you're looking for so long and you're trying to construct a space on a, on a two-dimensional plane. And if you're trying to copy what's there, you really learn what is there. And I, and I think that's one of the things that draws me to working from life is just that idea that I'm going to learn what I'm actually looking at. Um, and I, I made that painting from the top of a parking garage in Bloomington, Indiana. And when I, I like the look of things from height, from heights, like from an airplane. And the the best way that I could think of to simulate that process was to go up on top of the parking garage. And so I brought my travel easel and I went up on top of the parking garage and I sat up looking over and there was a Taco Bell on um, the intersection of Seventh and it was it was uh, Walnut Street and Seventh. But the ta I, it's called Seventh and Taco Bell because the Taco Bell was there, and it's an easy landmark to remember. And uh, so when I set up out there, I was I was making a painting on this painting is six by six, so six inches by six inches, so it's tiny. And I was looking over at the view from the from above and down to the ground and then all the way back to the horizon. And there's so much information, you know, there are other buildings, there are cars, there are, are, are lamps over the street, there are street um, signals, there is everything is going on. And so to try to capture all of that on this tiny little surface, well, you have to have a way in. So what I, what I do, when I'm starting something like that is I'll decide like, how much sky is there going to be. And when I know how much sky there's going to be vertically, then I can divide the canvas up and then I know how wide I can go. And then, and then from there, I start breaking it down, looking for big lines across that I can, that I can 
plug in that will help me divide up the space so that I can fit things within those little sections. And that's as much pre-drawing as I do. And then I just start mixing colors and then I go in. And so when I, when I started this painting, I knew how much sky and I knew what colors I was using and I knew where generally the big shapes were going to be and then I just started plugging the shapes in and as I as I'm working I would learn um, how big things actually are in relation to other things because like I was saying you have this ability to selectively focus and so sometimes you can't believe how small things actually have to be to be next to each other not just because of the small canvas but because of the way that things scale works yeah scale yeah yeah and so you know the thing is that i think like there's so much going on when you're painting that doesn't have anything to do with what the painting looks like. Uh, that's a good point, yes. But they're understand. really important part of the process for the painter. Yes. And I think for me, I like when I paint from life, you know, I'll remember what the weather was like that day and if, you know, if anything out of the ordinary happened or, you know, what I ate. I always feel and, like the canvas is somewhat commanding as you're trying to place items. And then once in a while we do surprise ourselves. Sounds like you yeah. were somewhat surprised with the overall total concept that you ended up with. I always am. Yeah. I, think, I think I only know I only know a little bit going in and then yes. I find things along the way. Yeah. Canvas commands, talks to you, triggers those other thoughts or yeah. What have you. Yeah. Great, great. I, I hope you enjoyed looking at this painting as much as I have uh, and hearing about it here on Spotlight on the Arts. So your subject matter varies and your media is always uh, oils? No, I also, I, some, well, I've done a little watercolor um, and I, I did a whole series of paintings that were, that I made on my lunch break. I had a retail job and I had an, had uh, you know 45 minutes for lunch, and I would I would bring my lunch to work every day, and I would paint my lunch in watercolors very quickly, and then eat it. And so oh, I, I didn't have time to uh, to labor over it, and I had to do it quickly so I would still have time to eat and get back to work. And it made sure that I was able to paint every day for a little bit, even if even if I was really busy. Yes, I, uh, I understand there's a lot of people that must paint every day, which keeps, uh, keep your head, it should be somewhat in that manner also. Well, now, you, um, do you always start with a sketch? No. Or, just, or do you let it come to you? I hate to draw on a canvas. I'll lay things out. But to take time to draw, I'd rather finish it in a brush. And I yeah. love oils also. Well, I do, it depends on what I'm doing. If I'm drawing something really complicated, um, then I will do more drawing. Like if I'm drawing uh, like a person or somebody with like something with a lot of pieces, then I'll do more pre-drawing. But I don't, I don't make studies and I don't, I don't make um, thumbnail sketches before I start paintings. I, I really, um, I just go in just and flow. yeah. Sounds good. Oh, very good. Well, that's that's a great story, and um, I guess is that uh, I guess the story how that came about on the heist is basically shows uh, basically the story behind that because it became to you really personal that painting uh, this painting that we're looking at. I understand that. And you know, every you mentioned how things are laid out and you see it a certain way, but you know, their viewer, of each viewer sometimes will see something different. Yeah. I'm working on a painting at home, all of a sudden, I, you know, I enjoy doing clouds, somewhat known for that. And uh, my sister walks out and here I have a, an angel appearing in this, this cloud. 
shape. So, it's, w w there are surprises. Yeah. <laughs> well, can you tell us what's happening here at the University of Central Missouri? Yes, we have an exhibition right now that's on view. It is an annual exhibition of work by artists in the Mid-Missouri Artists Group. And they are an organization of artists living in Warrensburg, Missouri and the surrounding communities. And they are an eclectic group. They are professionals and amateurs and people who are just interested in art. They make paintings and drawings and photography and digital, um, digitally manipulated photography. They make beadwork and sculpture and wood carving and any, anything that you could imagine. And right now we have an exhibition on view that incorporates so many of the things that they do. There are nearly 100 artworks in the exhibition. The painting behind us on the wall right now is by one of the artists, Anne Hassel. And uh, it's just one example of the many beautiful works that are on view right now. And that's Mid-Missouri Artists yeah. Association, mm -hmm. which I, again, am proud to be a member. Um, I'm not that active, but I do support uh, most of the galleries and try to enter into exhibits along the line. Uh, and I want to mention my uh, show, Spotlight on the Arts, coming up November, December, which you're invited to exhibit a piece. and. I'll be in contact with you on that as time goes along. So uh, you're invited, and I'd love to see uh, one of your pieces of art uh, associated with nature or what a conservation one of you. Well, Jamie, we're about out of time. So do you have any uh, closing words you'd like to share, uh, pass on to the viewers worldwide that might be inspiring to that individual in Brazil or China or whatever that or locally in Missouri, Kansas, Kansas City? Well, I just, Closing thoughts. I think that creativity is something that, that we, all, we all have, and it comes out in a lot of different ways. And I think that it's important to remember that it doesn't, what you're making doesn't have to be the point of it. It's, it, I think the, the process of making is something that just feels good and it and however it turns out it, the act of doing it is is beautiful thank you thank you very inspiring well mrs plan i want to thank you once again for contributing to spotlight on the arts it's been really inspiring and uh, to visit with you and uh, it's been very informational educational i'm sure for everyone watching the show so thank you once again Thank, Thank you, you for, for having me. me. Thank, Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Well, that wraps up another uh, look at an inspiring artist here, director, uh, who has advanced on up the ladder somewhat with her artwork and concepts, her, her skills, what have you, uh, working with people and also with a brush. <laughs> so uh, I want to thank the viewers for watching Spotlight on the Arts. And I ask you once again to stay healthy and safe. Don't forget to subscribe to GIAJ, uh, Global Media OTT Network, the streaming network where you'll see more than 175 artists, uh, interviews of all types of artists. So take care. Again, stay healthy. We'll see you next time.